Hi guys, it's JB here. Uh, to been a lot of people on YouTube probably wanting to know how I feel about Burnley's uh, now confirmed relegation to the back to the Championship after such the most disastrous season I've ever seen from a Burnley squad in over 25 years of watching them. Um, you know, it's going to be a, possibly a, you know, I'm going to say what I feel now because at the end of the day, I don't care what anyone else says. This has been an absolute joke of a season from minute one to the last minute at Tottenham last week. I know we've got one game to play against Nottingham Hill Forest, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a dead rubber now. Um, my my overriding feelings two days on from our nearly two days on from the relegation. Anger, bitterness, frustration. In some aspects I feel like we've been cheated out as well. But that's not the sole cause of why we're down with Sheffield United. It is not the sole cause. But um there are key factors as to why we've gone down. I will list them. You know, I'll list them in chronological order. Starting with the recruitment. Now, we spent £100 million, which for Burnley is quite a lot of money to spend. £100 million. Quid. You know, you'd have thought we could get some really good, decent, experienced Premier League players. I felt with the squad we got from the Championship winning squad last year, I felt if we get people like Anna Zanori or Manuel Benton a chance... I honestly felt we could do things this season. I really did feel that. Uh, hence why my prediction video on TikTok, I, I backed us to finish 11th or 12th. Because I felt we were, I felt if we get, if we added what four or five experienced Premier League hands, along with this exciting squad that we had from last season, minus Teller and Matson and a couple of others, I would barely said a couple of others. I felt we could do things. You know, maybe go on a good cup run or, you know, you know, not exactly get to Wembley, but you know, get to a quarterfinals of a League Cup or an FA Cup or something like that, and and finish mid-table in the Premier League. I felt that would have been a good season for us. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm not Vincent Company, sadly, and and the thing is, he wasted a hundred million pounds on untried crap. James Trafford, Dara O'Shea. Um, Zeki Anduni, it's all right scoring 25 goals in Belgium football, but the Premiership is a lot more of a beast of an animal. Um, Dar as I said, Darroche, um, there was a few others as well that uh, just didn't quite hit the mark. Um, there were some good signings. Bron Larson, I thought, was good. Sander Berg, I felt, was good. Now, he was a sort of player that we needed more of. Um, we signed there from Redmond and we didn't give him a chance. Um, so, you know, and when we spent, we just stockpiled wingers. And at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, we left us, we didn't replace, we didn't replace Ian Matson, Although Charlie Taylor did, did a, as good a job as he could have done in the system. Um, so the recruitment was poor. Uh, second thing I want to touch on, uh, was I'll touch on the tactics and companies being later and some of the players, but I want to touch on the uh, the refereeing. Now I've estimated we've lost fourteen to sixteen points on dubious and piss poor refereeing from either the referee on field or VAR. Um, there are certain decisions that I'm still not I'm still angry about a few months on. I felt the winning goal that Lyle Foster got against Nottingham Forest should have stood. There was nothing wrong with that at all. Didn't think there was a handball in the build-up. Still don't think it. And that cost us. Then there was that foul on Trafford by Eddie Bio against Luton. Morris gets the equaliser. And you think VAR is going to chalk that off because it looks clear and obvious to me. Trafford is clearly fouled. Referee doesn't give it. That's another decision against us. Then Stuart Atwell, Luton's biggest fan, does it at Aston Villa. You get Sander finds two he finds two piss poor excuses to get rid of Sanderberg for two yellows. Doesn't send their defender off when while uh, Foster's clean through and he stops him with a hand deliberate handball. And then John Duran does a seven point five, comes out willing to give him a penalty. You know, and then obviously we get we got done against West Ham, we got done against Bournemouth and 
and a couple of other teams. So um, that's sort of mostly contributed. I think if we'd got most of those points back, we'd have probably had it. We've probably had the relegation thing in our hands going into the final day. But then again, by the same token, we've lost a whopping thirty points from winning positions for our own cock-ups, our own mistakes, individual errors, like Josh Browno going missing in games or Dara Shea making bad errors at the back or, you know, just, you know, Lyle Foster not taking chances at, at 1-0 or whatever, you know, to put the game to bed. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. It really fucking does. And then, and then you've got to look at company. Yeah, we look at company, right? We're all wearing him a saint, and me included, after, listen, after last year, I expected better from him this year, t- tactically. I know he, he should, and it's a league he knows very well. He's won it as a player with Manchester City. You know, I'd have thought, with his contacts, we'd have got much better players than what we what we wanted. He, he got it wrong with the recruitment. He got it badly wrong tactically. He insists on playing this cavalier type ticky tacky side football that Pep Guardiola believes in. Now it's, it works for Pep Guardiola because he's got the he's got the backing and the finances and the world class talent to do it. Vincent Company doesn't have any of those luxuries. Sometimes, sometimes Vincent, it's actually nice to win games ugly. Sometimes you have to win ugly to get results. Look at what Everton had to do under Sean Dyche this season. You know, eight point deduction. But yeah, Sean Dyche, because he's a good manager, and because he's a good man management manager, he galvanised Everton, and they got a very, very workmanlike one nil victory over us. Funnily enough, it came through a mistake, or it came through an opportunist goal from their point of view from Dominic Calvert Lewin. Now, that's the sort of thing Burnley should be doing. Putting bodies on the line, doing this, doing that. And Vincent Company was a defender himself, so he has got no excuses at all. If Plan B isn't working, go to Plan B. It's not rocket science. It's just not good enough. And then there's certain individuals I'm going to pick on here. I picked on Josh Brownell quite a lot last last week. I still think he's the most uninspiring captain that Burnley have ever had in in their history. You know, in what I've seen over 30 years almost of supporting the Clarets. I think he's the worst captain I've ever seen. He doesn't inspire people. He doesn't work hard enough. He drifts in and out of games. He's a lazy ass bastard, basically. And I'm I'm sticking to what I said last week. Rip his contract up, strip him of the captaincy, and boot him out the door. I, I'd take an eight million pound loss on him because he's not worth it. You know, eight million, eight quid. And that's all I think of just Brownell. Um, Trafford waste of space. Um, not commanding enough in his penalty area, punches rather than he's a good shot stopper, not good with his feet, don't think he's good enough with his feet. I think um, Dara O'Shea cocked up a lot of the time in the first half of the season especially. He improved, but he improved when it was too late. Lyle Foster, he didn't help matters. Um, You know, he missed, you know, towards the back end of the season when we had chances to put games to bed. He messed up. Same with Zeki Anduni. Same with Esteve. Uh, same with um, David Fafana. He scored some great goals, but the simpler chances he couldn't bury. And I heard last week he just went straight down the tunnel, not disrespecting the fans. No, that's you don't do that. When you wear that shirt of Burnley, you, you applaud the fans. You appreciate their support. Whether you play bad, good or sh- downright shit, you applaud the fans and at least apologise. Let's put it this way. The players won't care, will they? They'll be sunning themselves up in Marbs or Los Angeles or wherever they go on their big, massive wage packets. Oh, we don't care. Oh, right, we got them relegated. You know, but they won't care when they're bloody sunning themselves in bloody Marbella or wherever they go for their holidays. They have to hurt. Those players should be hurting. Just like those fucking fans are hurting right now. It has been a, from top... If football did great tragedies... We have just done the biggest Greek tragedy of the lot. A hundred million pounds on untried shite, and we're relegated. And as we, and and did we get one single apology from Pace and company? I know Pace sort of gave a half-hearted apology, I think, on Twitter 
or whatever they call it these days. Eggs, I think they call it now. What was his... What was, oh, I'm sorry. But he got a gun in front of the camera and grovel. Literally grovel and apologise. Because that that is just not good enough. You know, they, there has to be an apology. You know, you think of the people that travel away to support Burnley away from home. Are they deserving of a refund by all the miles they've travelled? They've travelled thousands and thousands of miles around the country this 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 season to watch shower of shit. Don't they think they deserve refunds for what they've had to be put through? Seriously, seriously. I just hope the company gets it right this time around this this summer and can get us out of the championship because to me now he's on I was a company outer. They got they got going when it was too late, but company big season. Mess it up next don't get us out of the championship first time of asking, you're a goner. That's how I feel about Burnley's relegation to the championship. From start to finish, it's been a fucking horrible mess of a Greek tragedy.